the end, I'm uh, also going to to speak about what are we considering to do for the next major release since we are practically feature complete for Network Manager 1.2. We're essentially just ironing the wrinkles. So what's Network Manager? Why, why do we need it? When uh, I asked my package manager what's in the Network Manager package, it says it uh, configures uh, some a variety of network hardware on even uh, virtual networks. It uh, supports uh, some server hardware, some desktop hardware, mobile hardware, connects to, to VPNs. So that's, that's nice, but actually, why do we really need Network Manager? Like, there already are APIs to, uh, in, in kernel to configure the addressing and the, the routing, and most um, Network hardware comes with uh, some sort of uh, user space utility to configure it. Well, there's WPS applicant to, to configure the, the access points, and there's, uh, say, network uh, modem manager to configure the mobile broadband devices, and, well, most of uh, VPN solution comes with some sort of utility to set up the tunnel for you, so why do we really need network manager when uh, there's already tools to, to achieve all of this. And the thing is that we, this, that there are APIs and uh, utilities to, to do all this configuration management, we see that as part of a problem, not, a, not the solution when the, what the user actually wants is something like this. They don't really care about the details of the underlying, uh, or, 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 well, they perhaps want this, where, they, where it gets complex. And they don't really want to care about the, the details, like what uh, model of a, of a modem do they have, or what particular protocol with what settings is used by, by their VPN solution. So what we, are, what we are doing is that we are well, we're wiring things up for the for the user so that they, they just they just care about well, this. So we provide a daemon, a, a debus, that provides a debus service that uh, that provides a consistent uh, access to whatever networking uh, networking solutions that the the user have and. Uh, we provide this this Dbus API that uh, others could could build on, such as um, the desktop environments like KD, GNOME. They they build on top of it. We also on on servers we do provide a client utility that uh, called NMCLI that uh, that provides um, provides an interface to the functionality we we offer. What we also do is that we the, in, in our picture, the network configuration is really like dynamic. It, it changes, and we need to react to those changes. Say, um, when uh, when we get out of uh, reach of a Wi-Fi access point, we might want to tear down the configuration for that particular network, re remove the the uh, and move move the say the route to to another network connection, say mobile broadband. That, that still works, and or we we want to apply certain configuration when uh, when the user plugs in a network cable. So well, that's that's what we do. We, we sort of glue these things together. And uh, apart from the debug interface, we we provide for the programmers to to build on their their thing on we. We do provide something called the dispatcher interface, where the user could uh, just copy the, their shell scripts and they, they run when some network change happens. So, in a, in a consistent way, you, you can you can have a dispatcher script that, that runs when you connect to a VPN to do some particular action, or or when you when you say disconnect from a from a Wi-Fi network. Like no matter what the actual hardware or the actual connection is with to provide the consistent interface. 
So yeah, this is uh, what it looks like when the desktop environment uses uses our yeah, we see it's it's sort of similar to the to the switches I've had in the previous slides. This is what the what the what the user typically wants to see when they when they manage their network on a on a desktop. So where do we stand now? With uh, Network Manager 1.2, we are very close to, to the release. We haven't done a major release in uh, over uh, one year. We've done 10 minor releases in, in last year. And um, those minor releases were actually not that minor. We, we backported a lot of functionality into the, the stable branch. So uh, like most of the stuff we've worked on, it's already shipped to the user. But what we, what we couldn't do in the in the stable branch is do any major refactorings, major major changes. So we have them in the branch soon to be released. And as you see, the numbers, the number of the commits is quite quite high. We got uh, we got uh, almost uh, 3,000 uh, commits waiting for release in the 1.2 branch. So what what did we really change? Like what's what's new? This. <laughs> the short answer is uh, a lot, and the long answer is actually a lot. <laughs> um, and this, this actually is, is the stuff that's uh, not a complete, complete change log. We omitted here the stuff that's already backported to, to 1.0. So let me just briefly uh, talk about the, the highlights of, of this change. So what we're serious about is um, is um, cutting things away from our dependency chain because uh, well, people people like to, to run network manager in well, networks uh, notably in in, uh, in many scenarios and a lot of these scenarios involved uh, uh, doing as minimal installation as possible that's uh, um, when it comes to consumption of resources such as uh, memory, but also the dependencies we we drag in, we didn't actually improve the memory consumption significantly in uh, 1.2. We we have some some things uh, planned for 1.4, but we didn't manage to do that. But what we did is that we got rid of some of the dependencies. You can see that we. Uh, for link local addresses, we actually started to use the systemd network d based library so that we we don't need to drag in an external tool and for the hostname management, we also offload it to systemd so um, there's more of this to to come like the the stuff that's taken well care of by by systemd we're just going to distribute it away from network manager we also the DBus glib thing is, is notable that it was a huge, huge refactoring. Like uh, those of you familiar with uh, with glib know that uh, glib already provides uh, provides a DBus client library for some time. GDBus um, Network Manager predates this library by by many years, so we, we weren't really like able to use it. But now we we did a complete. Like, Refactor of all the bus facing code to, to, to use it so we could get rid of this, this legacy dependency it's quite it's quite nice because it um, it implements some some nice stuff uh, the bus provides such as the the object manager that makes uh, the network manager code simpler more robust in the in the effect also more more maintainable because we're well that's that's the case when you're using more modern interfaces. Um, we've done some improvements in the Wi-Fi area. Uh, notably, we'll be, we'll be enabling Wi-Fi power save by, by default. This is a, a feature contributed by Canonical, who actually does phones that, uh, that run Network Manager. That, so the, anyone has, here has a Ubuntu phone. So we have, those are essentially Network Manager phones. So improving Wi-Fi as well. Net, uh, WPS applicant go, got a bit uh, better lately uh, in, in managing the Wi-Fi scan list, so we 
instead of uh, using like our own custom code to track uh, which uh, networks are available, we just uh, used uh, what WPS applicant provides now, which is well slimming again. Uh, the client utility we provide, uh, NMCLI, we had some very nice improvements there. Um, like, there are no huge changes there. Uh, like, you, you probably noticed that we, we aren't really doing any huge changes in Network Manager overall because it's, it's a major, major project. It's a sort of, sort of stable feature complete for, for most users. So we were doing like incremental improvements making the code more, more maintainable, slimming down, and adding small enhancements mostly. But the uh, last one, the color output, is actually my favorite. <laughs> it's really, really good. Once you, once you, if, you're, if you're using NMCLI often, then you'll get to, to used to this really, really quickly. And if you're not using NMCLI quickly, then you probably should. It's a really, really nice tool, especially for the, for the users who, who prefer command line, and I think there's a lot of developers here who are exactly in, in that crowd that would, when you're connecting to a Wi-Fi, so here you, you prefer to, to type it on a command line. It's really easy with NMCLI, which is to NMCLI, device Wi-Fi, connect, and name of the network, and you're there. We're doing some improvements in the VPN area as well. You probably know that Network Manager integrates with uh, well, virtually any VPN that's actually used. We have, we have the plugin architecture, so we maintain a set of plugins for the most popular VPNs, such as OpenVPN, the IPsec, IKE-based, well, uh, the IPsec tunnels we, we do support, uh, Cisco-compatible and Juniper-compatible networks with OpenConnect. But there's also some community-maintained VPN plugins, um, such as uh, tunneling through SSH or Iodine, which does a VPN over a tunnel over DNS. In case you're in a particularly hostile environment, you to use that. But uh, the VPN plugins, they are, uh, first, they are standalone DBus services, and it, it used to be difficult to to make that, that plugins connect to more than one VPN at the, at the same time, we fixed this now. So you can run more instances of VPN connections at the, at the same time, which is, which is sort of nice. Like, and there's a, there's a lot more. Um, not sure if I should like, read this, probably not, but um, the important points there are that we are, oh, the, there's, um, in the, in the Wi-Fi slide, you probably noticed that we are now uh, turning on the, the MAC address randomization. Uh, for, for now, it's for, for scanning for networks, so it, it protects you from, from tracking until you actually associate with the Wi-Fi, then, then your actual MAC address is used. We're probably going to even further enhance this in uh, Network Manager 1.4. Um, point is there that we cannot really, by default, use a completely random MAC address because it, it would drive certain network operation, operators like nuts. But it seems like there's a way to, to, to make sure that when you connect to the same network, your MAC address stays safe stay stable and when you move into another one that you actually use another randomized one. Um, we're doing something like this already for the IPv6 addresses. You might, you might know that uh, traditionally the, the host part of the IPv6 address uh, is uh, derived from your MAC address and that's, uh, that worries the, the, the people who, who care about, about tracking. So for Network Manager 1.2, we implemented uh, RFC 7212, which uh, introduces a way to use a unique uh, host bar for each, each network, and, uh, but change it when you, when you move to another network. It essentially does a, a crypto, cryptographic hash of uh, 
certain strings that uh, identify the network, such as the subnet, the Wi-Fi SSID, or in the network manager, the identifier of the configuration of the, of the network, and the secret key, so it's not predictable for anyone to use which, uh, to, to predict which uh, host part are you going to use, so it's impossible to track. We're thinking about doing something like the, this for the MAC addresses in Wi-Fi, so that you, it's not possible to, to track you when you when you connect to connect to different uh, different networks, but still maintain some stability. Like when you when you return to the network, you get the same address. So, and just pointing it out that we, as I said, we we're mostly doing like small improvements, but sometimes the small improvements really really matter. Like uh, for the for the users who care about the privacy, this this is the things that we are serious about it, we are, we are improving. Also a notable feature is that we support creating of uh, many more types of the, of the uh, creating and management of uh, virtual devices, which is nice for, for the servers. Uh, for the servers, you may know that we already support all like typical network devices that are used. We are able to do bridges and uh, VLANs and bonds and teaming. And we are also able to, to stack it on top. So with Network Manager, it's sort of trivial to, to do VLANs on Ethernet and then bridge it and, and put it into a bond if you like to. Oh, probably, in, yep. So yeah, <laughs> this is a rainbow for Rashid who complained that uh, my Slides come seem like they come out of North Korea. It's colorful. Um, with Network Manager 1.2, we, as I said, we're very close to the release. We've already done uh, the first beta, which is feature complete uh, API ABI stable. So, if you're building anything on top of Network Manager, you can uh, and, and want to take uh, want to make use of the new features we've uh, introduced with 1.2. It's already it's already feature complete. We, it, it passes uh, our, our test suite, and we do, um, the, the, we do have a really, really good test suite. So, so once it passes, we are fairly confident that uh, like nothing really important would break. So you can already try it. You can uh, already, al already build on it. If, if there are any desktop developers here who might be interested in in the features in Network Manager 1.2, you can try it. You can, when you install Fedora Rawhide for some time already, you get all the fairly latest code. So you, you're encouraged to give it a try, and also, also Debian Experimental pick it, pick it up already. Debian is uh, doing a fairly good job at keeping their Network Manager up to date. They're, as soon as we release a stable update, they, they quickly pick it into, into an up, unstable distribution and they have some very like, rigorous testing in place where, where well, they are sort of popular for being good at this. So it, Debian is a, is a good, good distro to try out and up-to-date network manager as well. And we're going to, we're doing a final release before Fedora 24, so in the next Fedora you'll get the new network manager. What's next? And uh, as for the next release of Network Manager, which we plan to deliver sometime this year as well, we, we don't plan to spend another year doing a major milestone. So um, we're, do, we're, we're, we're doing some like uh, development process and adjustments to, to make this possible. We're, we'll be do, doing uh, continuous integrations, which we don't have in place yet, so that we get more confidence in our, our code base. But there, there's, uh, there's a couple of features we already are considering for the, for the, for the next, year, next release. So when you see this list, you probably can add the question mark at the end of, end of uh, each of each of these entries because we're not finally decided yet. Like, well, for Network Manager 1.2, it's easy. We are, we are feature complete, but um, um, this also, uh, it's, my, it's my last slide, and after that there will be um, a place for, for questions, but I'm, we're also very open to suggestions about what would you like to see in the next major release. So we'd like to, we'd like to hear from you. 
So, yep. So, what what we what are the, what, are, what are our priorities? Is uh, to make to make uh, network manager more more secure. I said more hardening. We've uh, for 1.2 we've uh, made use of some uh, some feature system D provides to, to limit the capability set of uh, of network manager, and we we'd like to reconsider doing some architecture changes uh, to make it make it more more secure with the p11 kit integration we uh, that's um, we'd like to improve the experience when you're using a smart card with a certificate or or even gnome keyring in your desktop so that we could forward uh, the p p11 pkcs11 uh, protocol to the to the daemon and and uh, not actually copy the certificates over over dbus or, or in files we, as we do today which is going to well, improve for the users using uh, certificates with wi-fi or or, or vpn so that's going to make life easier and recently a um, patch from a community contributor appeared on our mailing list like two days ago with a nearly complete implementation of what we were considering for some time already and that's the network namespace support and it's probably cooler than it looks because it means that we could actually uh, say separate the VPN connection from the actual actual network connection you have, and uh, you could make sure that no traffic leaves your leaves your uh, desktop uh, aside from the from the VPN, even if the VPN crashes or anything, which is nice for the users who really care about privacy. Or you could do the reverse, like you could. You could uh, isolate the, the VPN tunnel into a separate namespace and maybe move your shell or web browser there so that you could only use the VPN connection for your, I don't know, corporate traffic and uh, leave uh, the rest of your desktop, just use your ordinary network connection. So this, this is, uh, I, I think it's the, probably the most important thing we, we could do for, for the next major release. We're really excited about it. And that's where my talk ends. And uh, if you have any question, please ask. There are a couple of more network manager uh, developers in the room, so if I'm not able to ask the question, then they will help me with that. So yep. thank you for your attention. Any questions? Hi, I'm um, Paul Wouters. I was wondering if you're going to do anything with uh, a hotspot namespace where none of the applications are bothered by uh, DNS lies that you get while you're on the hotspot, and after the hotspot authentication is finished, that only then all the network uh, applications become aware that there's a network. Oh, thank you for the question. So we were actually, there, there's a, a group of people that would like to get uh, better DNSSEC support in the, in the Fedora 24, maybe 25, and uh, the isolation of the hotspot, like the, the capture portal detection there is, uh, is, is really necessary for, the, uh, for, for their machinery to work. So we, like the Network Manager core team, are actually not currently doing anything about it, but there is a group of people interested in implementing this, like separating the, the capture portal. Uh, the multiple VP, oh, sorry, I think I... Um, the uh, multiple VPNs uh, being supported by Network Manager sounds awesome. Um, the only thing I'm concerned about is what, how does Network Manager handle if you have um, conflicting IP space ranges? Well, in that case, uh, one connection wins. <laughs> okay, that's what I figured. I just was wondering if it passed my mom test because I would love to get her set up on that, but I don't know that she would know what to do. Like. I um, I guess I'm holding it too close or something. All I was just saying is, I think if my, I tried to get this set up for my mom, she probably wouldn't be able to debug it, which is fine, but I probably will tell her not to do multiple VPNs if it's not uh, something that would be like represented at like an icon level where she could see that there was a problem. But 
awesome? Well, we're actually pretty clever about about the conflict for conflicting routes in the in the connections. That well, you obviously cannot well you, you cannot cannot have uh, two routes to the same same network with the same metric on the on the and, and to this, this different uh, network interfaces because uh, the kernel would just remove the previous one if you had the new one but we actually keep keep track of the of the routes that should be on the interface internally so when you when you turn on two connections and both of them uh, use the same routes then the first one wins and you activate the second one and then you disable the first one, then the second one gets the route. It, uh, it, it doesn't end up in a state when, where there would be no route set, set up. So we're probably as clever as we can be about, about this. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, so my question is for more of the, the next version. Uh, was. 1.4, I think, uh, the namespace uh, support sounds really interesting. So is there, what's the plan actually to, uh, for the user to specify which application should be in which namespace, should have which connection? Is there some plan for that, some GUI or something? Well, um, as for Network Manager 1.4, there's like no real plan about anything yet. So we, we, need, to, we need to figure this out. We, well, obviously the first thing we'll do is to Expose a Dbus API that's uh, uh, well at to the connection we already expose on the Dbus API to add an information about the namespace, and then the, then we would need to figure out how to do how to do the desktop integration. Well, we'll probably need to to have some API to so that the application in the in the desktop could request some process to be moved to that to that interface because it's a privileged operation, but. That's, uh, we're not uh, even yet at the drawing table there. So we, we will be considering this, like no definite answer. Yeah, sounds good, thanks. Yeah. Hi, I got a question according to uh, IPv6 sharing plan in the next version of 1.4. And to the extent of that, uh, is there some plan for like having uh, IPv6 addresses while the host that will be sharing the connection will have only IPv4? So this kind of like tunneling of a, and vice versa, if I got only IPv6 and then getting to IPv4, this kind of tunneling transition plans? So short answer, no. <laughs> Like we were, we're really not considering this, and as I've said, we have no definite plan for the next major release. But uh, this is the sort of thing we'd, we'd like to hear. So, after the presentation, I'm very likely to add this to, to a list of things we consider. So, yeah, thank you for the for the. Thanks. Hey, what exactly uh, does uh, offloading to uh, system D bring to network manager? Like earlier network and. Uh, doesn't it mean like a, a, a problem for non-systemd systems? Uh, excuse me, I didn't. Uh, what's, what, what exactly are benefits of uh, offloading uh, to systemd some functionality uh, like systemd well, network? We, we do, well, it, it makes, uh, makes uh, network manager smaller. Well, the, the things would be the offload to, well, Systemd now it obviously is well the the host name support which really is not our business we just like traditionally do that so yeah and uh, as for other things Systemd related it's more like we are sharing code there they are using because they are actually are doing some pretty amazing things like um, let's say the DHCP client we do we do currently use DH client. But we do. We would like to, to to not to do it anymore because DH client, believe it or not, its memory footprint is about twice as big as Network Manager, and well, the code base is uh, of the comparable size, and well, it's just a DHCP client. So Network D seems to have a system D seems to have already fixed this by by doing their own uh, DHCP implementation, which is considerably less crazy and less historic stuff there. 
So what, where we benefit is that we don't really get the user to, to run this like old beast and uh, have the same functionality with much, much less code, much less overhead. So if that answers your, your question. Uh, and what happens if you are on non-system the uh, system? Well, it, it, this doesn't actually actually depend on the on the system D runtime. It's a, it's a library that, that runs in, independently of uh, of system D. And for the hostname support, where we run on a system that doesn't have system D, <laughs> poor souls, um, we do just do what we what we did well, previously for those systems. Write write an etc hostname and, and run the hostname command to change the run, runtime hostname. But we'd, we'd really prefer not to. Any more questions there? So thank you for your, for your attention and enjoy the rest of the, the conference. Thank you.